to live 80.7 years. That's up from 77.8 years for a baby born in 1991. But now some recent studies have set off alarm bells in the medical community, with some doctors warning that the children of today could be the first generation to live shorter lives than their parents. We're up there vying with the worst numbers in the world. In early January, a U.S. report said that obesity had overtaken smoking as the number one threat to North Americans' quality of life. And Canadian doctors said the country was facing a health crisis. It just happens in an insidious type of fashion, you know. We slowly uh, remove movement from our lives. We make uh, eating uh, foods that are calorically dense quite easy and readily available. Um, and it just creeps. Then, two weeks later, came an even more alarming report. It said even younger Canadians were showing early signs of heart disease. It's very likely that we're going to see child, the children and youth of today, within a decade from now, entering hospital emergency rooms at the same time as their baby boomer parents for car treatment for cardiac issues. It's shocking. It's, um, you know, in medical school you were always taught that this is the disease of people in their later 50s, 60s, 70s. Uh, but uh, yeah, you don't expect to see people in their 20s and 30s. Just gonna take your blood. Doctors say both younger and older Canadians need to eat better, exercise more, and be prepared to make major changes to the way they live. So what are you gonna do now? What changes do you have to make? Almost everything. The way I eat, the way I walk, the way I, the way I conduct my work. Uh, I guess the, the entire lifestyle has to change. But of course, that's not easy. And it can be particularly hard to convince younger people that exercising now will keep them healthier later, when later seems so far away and they feel so healthy today. So a teacher in Saskatoon decided to try a new approach to try to prove exercise can make kids healthier and smarter. The CBC's Joan Leishman has that story. At 14, Barney Stepanow has already been to the school of hard knocks. He's bounced between the city and the reserve and pulled by the addictions on the streets. Barney goes to school now at City Park Collegiate in Saskatoon, a high school of last resort for kids who haven't been able to make it anywhere else. Kids whose lives are full of pain. I started drugs when I was eight years old. I started drinking when I was about 10. So it was quite bad for me. Like, I, I knew I was doing bad stuff. Huge efforts are made here to keep kids in school and find ways to help them succeed. There's free food and clothing. There's a daycare where young parents can leave their children. And there's a feeling of family, a place that's safe from the dangers outside. In the past, school has taught these kids little more than frustration and failure. When Barney first arrived at City Park last year, he couldn't read or write. Well, it was embarrassing for me because uh, it was hard for me to go out in public and like knowing all these things, that just looking at signs and what they say and what do they say. Like Barney, the other grade 8s were also struggling at school. They were working at about a grade 4 level. And that wasn't all teacher Allison Cameron had to deal with. Behavior is typically a problem, a uh, lot of ADHD. M more than half my class last year was ADHD, diagnosed on Ritalin. Um, we see a lot of kids with um, oppositional defiance disorder, all sorts of diagnosed illnesses that prevent them from learning or from behaving appropriately. 14-year-old Destin Mesner was one of her pupils who excelled at behaving badly. He's a budding artist. But he was better known around school for his anger and defiance. Desden was a real challenge, even for someone trained to deal with behavioral problems like Allison Cameron. But Cameron could see enormous potential in her students. The question was how to get at it. She thought there could be an answer in a book entitled Spark 
by Harvard University psychiatrist John Rati. Spark examines how exercise affects the brain. It promotes a, a, a process what we call neurogenesis or growing new brain cells. There's nothing that we know of that does that better than exercise. It doesn't only help brain cells grow, says Dr. Rady, it also affects behavior. People are sharper, they're more attentive, they're less impulsive, they're less fidgety, uh, they can sustain their attention longer, and it, it promotes their ability to sort through information and take it in. Rati's best example is Naperville Central High near Chicago, which today has one of the best academic records of any secondary school in the U.S. and one of the lowest obesity rates in the country. Eighteen years ago, the school developed a fitness program where every student did vigorous aerobic exercise every day for 45 minutes. It was the first program of its kind in the U.S., one that also has an innovative combination of movement and classroom learning. And when the school entered an international competition in math and science, where Americans usually place 11th or 12th, Naperville came out on top. Excited by Naperville, Allison Cameron went to her principal and asked if she could move exercise equipment into her classroom. Carrie Alcorn was easily convinced. When Allie came to me with the proposal that uh, someone was going to donate a fair bit of phys ed equipment for us, uh, that, was, that was pretty easy to say yes to. The, the one initial concern I have was where are you going to put all that equipment? While that was quickly resolved, what was tougher was convincing the kids to use it. It was defiance all around. Most of them initially thought that this was really hokey. Why would I get on a treadmill? Oh, uh, well, I said, no, 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 doesn't do anything, no, no, it's bull, pure bull. That was then, this is now. Monday morning math class, where the first thing grade nine students do is strap on a heart monitor. Good morning, you guys. Please make sure your heart rates are at 134. Keep it there. For 20 minutes, the kids work out on exercise equipment right in the classroom. But once a week, I'd like to see you guys challenging yourself in a different way, it's challenging different parts of your brain, different parts of your body. After what is for some a grueling start to the day, it's time for the second half of math class. And this is when you notice that something very different is going on. They're concentrating and working hard. Nobody's swearing or running around. When before, some students could barely sit still for 10 or 15 minutes. None of this surprises Harvard's John Rady. When you raise the heart rate, what you do is you turn on a part of the brain that might be a little bit sleepy. That is the front part of the brain that is involved in controlling impulses. And this is the major effect that one sees with kids that have trouble managing their behavior in class. Speaking out too much, not uh, acting out, being too fidgety, not being able to sit still. There's a growing body of science now about the different ways exercise affects the brain. This part, the hippocampus, is like central station for learning and memory. Sustained, vigorous exercise causes the release of nerve growth factors, especially one called BDNF, which acts like a fertilizer on this and other areas of the brain. We make so many good things like this miracle growth for the brain, for instance, uh, when our brain cells are clicking away. So it bathes the brain, if you will, in this uh, nice fertilizer which helps preserve the nerve cells, uh, make them stronger, helps them withstand stress, and makes them more pliable. 
it isn't just any kind of exercise that sharpens your brain function. The key is sustained aerobic movement. Scientists are still trying to discover the exact formula for different ages, but here's what they think is best for high school students. Get the heart rate up to between 65 and 75 percent of its maximum and keep it there for at least 20 minutes. That's what makes this program so different from a regular gym class. In phys ed classes, there are usually a few kids who get their hearts pumping hard, but most don't. There's a lot of hanging around, and some try to avoid participating altogether. Allison Cameron considers her experiment wildly successful, and she can prove it. Her grade eights were tested before they began using the treadmills, and again at the end of the year. On average, they gained a full grade level in reading, in writing, and in math. There's no way to explain it other than this program. I had them from September till February, and I didn't see any sort of improvements even close to that. Wow. So in the last four months, the only thing that changed was the treadmills. So, how did Barney Stepanow do? Remember, at the beginning of grade eight, he couldn't read or write, and at first, things weren't looking good. I could not get him to sit in his desk. 10 minutes max, unless he was sleeping, which <laughs> it, was, it was one extreme or the other. By February, he, he was the kid that had, for the first time, had finished an assignment. Well, I just noticed, you know, I started getting smarter. I started, I started knowing, I started paying attention more. Barney also started talking about turning his life around and thinking about his future. You know, I just see people out there doing drugs, doing needles. And I see that basically every day and I'm, I look at that person as like, is that me? Is that how I want to grow? Is that, is that going to be me in the future? During the four-month-long program, Barney's academic performance took a huge leap forward. His reading improved over 20 percent and his comprehension by 400 percent. You always know something, Destin. I don't. <laughs> Allison Cameron says Destin has benefited too. These days, they have a good rapport. He's taking a real interest in his classes and he's less defiant. Yeah, kind of changed. What changed your mind? Well, I felt more energized, for one. I felt a little bit happy-ish. The biggest turnaround was in Destin's mood. He was able to control his anger and to concentrate more. But academically, he also showed remarkable progress. His reading went up by 25%, math 25%, and comprehension by 30%. At school and at home, kids are moving less and less. Unlike our ancestors who were on the move all the time, we mostly sit on our butts, hunter-gatherers of information. Our brains are geared for us to, to move, and if we don't, we get into this kind of trouble that we're into today, lack of resilience, uh, the obesity crisis, to be sure, and actually not using our, our brains to the maximum. Oh, God, we never, never dreamed that we would have had the amount of success that we had last year. It was incredible. Everybody improved, and if I wasn't there, if I didn't witness it, I honestly wouldn't believe it. Check your heart rate right now, please, Barney. Cameron feels she's found a winning formula. Less sitting equals more learning, and it's a formula she's hoping to share. She's helped set up a foundation to encourage other schools to get involved in similar programs, and if they can't afford it, provide them with the necessary equipment. Joan Leishman, CBC News, Saskatoon. The program has been such a success, it has been expanded. Now most grade 8 and grade 9 students work out in class for 20 minutes, three times a week. And that's News and Review. Don't forget to check out our website at newsandreview.cbclearning.ca. I'm Carla Robinson. Thanks for watching.
They were planning a terrorist attack on Canada. This group posed a real and serious threat. It had the capacity and intent to carry out these acts. Until police moved in and arrested them. On News & Review today, the trials of the Toronto 18. Hello, I'm Carla Robinson. It was a terror plot that shocked Canadians, a plot to set off powerful truck bombs that could have killed thousands of people in Ontario. And what made it even more shocking was that all the accused were Canadians or had lived in this country most of their lives. The story began almost four years ago when police in Ontario arrested 17 people. The men arrested yesterday are Canadian residents from a variety of backgrounds. For various reasons, they, they appear to have become adherents of a violent ideology 